Thank you very much for clicking on this video. I am very, very excited to have you here with me. On 18th May 2023, uh, chemistry students of West Africans are going to be writing their practical chemistry, majorly in Nigeria. And uh, we, we are asked to use hydrated sodium triazocarbonate for salts, 5 grams of it, dissolve it in 1 dm cube. 1 dm cube is the same thing as 1000 centimeter cube. And we also asked to use 8.5 centimeter cube of the hydrochloric acid and dissolve it in 1 dm cube, which is the same thing as 1 centimeter cube. And uh, we need to know the molecular mass of the hydrated salts is actually 286. As you can see on the screen, how I got that. And also, that of hydrochloric acid is 36.5 gram per mole. Let's start with that of the salts, which is the hydrated sodium triazocarbonate 4, which is actually the one we are using as the base. What happened here is that we need to look at the concentration in gram per mole, where we are going to look at mass in gram all over volume in dm cube. And a general word for this is what we call mass concentration. So the mass given to us to use is 5 gram, and they are, we, are, we are being asked to use 1 dm cube for it. So we say 5 gram all over 1 dm cube. That will give us 5 gram per dm cube. So I want, I want you to know that whenever you are doing uh, solubility or you are doing concentration, always make sure you convert your centimeters to dm cube. If you are a student, and I believe that this is going to help you a lot. And this video is actually coming to give you a better guideline on how to prepare your acid or how to have the mind of your examiner. That is what I am trying to do here. The next episode is going to show you some questions that I think they are going to give you in your exam. So after that, the next thing is to calculate the mole per dm cube of the salt. It's very, very important. So we are going to work with molar concentration, which is mass in gram all over molar mass in gram per mole times volume in dm cube. Or you can just use mole all over volume in dm cube. But if you don't want to go with that, just use what I am using. The reason why I'm actually using mass in gram over molar mass uh, in gram per mole times volume in dm cube is because I need my students to understand that mass in gram all over molar mass is the same thing as mole. Yes, you need to grab that. So if we are working with that, we have 5 grams all over 286 gram per mole times 1 dm cube. That will give us a simple value as 0.01748825. And this value, we need to approximate it to uh, 3 significant figure, which is going to give us 0.0175 to 3 significant figure. And it is being well recommended by uh, the WIAC examiners that you should leave it in 0 0.0175 that is three significant figure to calculate the theoretical value of the average volume of the acid used that is the end point we are talking of uh, we have to do something note your end point might be slightly different from other schools and if i were you i advise you to use a different end point from others it is very very impossible for three chemistry teachers to prepare uh, their reagents and they have the same end point. It is very, very impossible. I'm trying to tell you the truth. It's very, very impossible because the acid we are using might be different and uh, the uh, weighing balance we might be using might be different. The way we actually prepare our reagents or uh, our specimen or sample might actually be different. So it is unlikely for all the chemistry teachers around an area to have the same value but we can have what we call average value of the same area but not all of them having the same value so just have it in mind that your value is going to be slightly different from other school so how am i going to get this thing step one the required volume is actually 8.5 centimeter cube and they did not give us specific specification that means that the acid we are going to be using might vary and that is why we are not going to have the same average volume used throughout I hope you get me on that. In the same school, we might even have the same uh, average value in the same school. Yes, the same school might have that, but different school might not have the same average value. So, what I'm expecting you to know here is that the specific gravity of the acid is 1.25 gram per centimeter cube. What I mean by specific gravity is the density of that acid. My own school is actually reading 36% of the acid. 
and it's also the specific gravity is 1.25. Your screw might be different. So don't use mine to do your own, but by the calculation and what you're going to present, you're going to see that we will have very close values. So I go. Step two. If, for instance, your reading and my own is just the same thing, let's say you have 1.25 gram per centimeter cube as your density from your stock, just your HCL stock. And so what you're going to do is just use this my formula here, the HCL percentage by mass times the volume, which is 8.5 for now, times 1.25. That 8.5 is actually what they ask us to use. But I have another calculation I'm going to show you, which is possible that you might not finally use this 8.5. Yes, but for now, just know that you are using this 8.5 centimeter cube. That is, if you actually want to arrive with what other people are arriving, partially, very, very close because of our acid. Maybe your acid has stayed longer more than five years, so it might have some problem. So when it starts to have that problem, so you need to have some calculation, you need to calculate in order to meet up with other people's uh, average uh, title. I hope you get me on that. That is their end point. So use this. The, the, the SCL percentage by mass times volume times density. So we are having it by substitution. I'm going to have 0 0.36 times 8.5 times 1.25. The value is giving me 3.825 grams. So the value gram of the SCL present in that 8.5 centimeter cube we asked us to use, according to my own work, is 3.825 grams. Listen, it might not be the same with your own school. Yes, it might not be the same with the old school, but let's just continue. Just grab this idea so that you can go on and use your own school and do the same thing. Do what I'm going to ask you to do for your own school. But majorly, what we're supposed to have is 3.825 grams. Calculating the concentration in gram per dm cube. Here, we are going to look into mass concentration of the acid. So, we're having 3.825 gram all over 1 dm cube coming from mass in gram all over volume in dm cube so we are having it as 3.825 gram per dm cube because it's one dm cube you're using which is 1000 centimeter cube hope you get me on that so we calculate the concentration in more per dm cube we have calculated that of gram per dm cube now in more per dm cube we are calculating molar concentration you need to know that the molar mass of hcl that is hydrochloric acid is 1 plus 35.5 which is going to give us 36.5 gram per mole if you are a student, you need to know this. You need to understand what I'm doing here. Molar concentration is the same thing as mass in gram all over molar mass in gram per mole times volume in dm cube. Or you can just say mole all over volume in dm cube. For mass, you can just say mass all over volume in dm cube. So all these things is important that you grab them for yourself. So the what goes on with 3.825 all over 36.5 gram per mole by dm cube times 1 dm cube so the value is going to give us 0 0.10479 mole per dm cube this value you need to approximate it to three significant figures because that is what we mostly use so we have it as 0 0.105 mole per dm cube the three significant figure and it's well recommended for work to for you to use that so from this we can be targeting towards our end point from the balanced chemical equation of the reaction, as you can see on the screen, you will notice that the acid to base ratio there is 2 is to 1. So the number of moles that is representing the acid is going to be Na equal to 2 and Nb equal to 1. The concentration of the solution of A, which is the acid, we already got it and approximated it to be 0 0.105 mole per dm cube. That of solution B, we got it as 0. 0.0175 mole per dm cube, as you can see on the screen. Now, you know that in the laboratory, uh, most of our pipette is on 25. So, I'm using 25 to calculate your end point because I know that most of us will use that of 25 rather than the 20. So, for this 25, you are using 25 in your school. So, you just know that the pipette is going to be 25. That is the volume of the base is going to be 25. Now, you will be expecting what should be the volume of the acid. You go with your CAVA all over CB. VB, which will give you NA all over NB. So when you have something that looks like that, you do cross multiplication as you can see on the screen. So we divide both sides by CA, NB because that is, we want to make VA the subject point. We are looking at the end point from the teacher's angle, not just from the student angle. This is the teacher's angle. So the VA is giving us 0 0.0175 times 25 
times 2 all over 0 0.105 times 1. So if you do the calculation well, you're going to have 8.3333333 centimeter cube. Then, and because we are working with three significant figure, I approximate it to 8.33 centimeter cube. So the end point here is 8.33 centimeter cube. I know some people may have 8.6, some people may have 8.7. They are not wrong. It is based on the acid they use. And I said it before, but if for instance you want to have the same value as I'm having here, you want to have a value between 8.3 and 8.4, what are you going to do? Weigh an empty small measuring cylinder, label the mass as M1, add 10 centimeter cube of your HCL and weigh again, label it M2. So you're going to have M2 minus M1 to be the real mass of that particular HCL. I hope you get me on that. So we look for the density of your acid. The density of your acid is mass given in gram all over volume in centimeter cube. So if, for instance, the mass of that acid, let's assume that the mass of the acid is 11.5 grams. If you divide it by 10 centimeter cube, it will give you 1.15 gram per centimeter cube, which the density now is 1.15. You remember I told you the real density of this should be 1.25 just because of your acid might have stayed longer it has stayed more than five years because you have stayed more than five years so it is going to be a problem my own school this is the fourth year next year is going to be five years so my school still have close uh value range you can use for it i hope you get me on that now if you do that you have gotten the density you can see your density being lower than 1.25 will make your volume to be more so we are going to use a particular value if you want to get very close to my value as 8.33 or something like 8.4. So what you are going to do for yourself is to perform this calculation. Just use this as volume of the acid you are going to use. Remember, they asked us to use 8.5, but we want to know the one you are going to use to prepare your own uh, solution. It's going to be 3.825, the theoretical mass of HCL, according to the calculation we did. I hope you get me on that. So divided by 0 0.36 times 1.15 you know that 1.15 is actually the density you calculated i'm talking to you as a teacher if you are a teacher that is what you're supposed to do then your value will come out if for instance we are using this my value of 1.15 the answer will be 9.23913 if we approximate it is going to give us 9.24 i know we might have problem in calculating 0 0.04 so just approximate it to be 9.2 centimeter cube so you are going to use 9.2 cm cube per 1 dm cube, whereas others will be using 8.5 cm cube per 1 dm cube. That is if you want to get accurately the same value. But remember, when you are reporting, you will report that you are still using uh, the same 8.5 cm cube to, the, to YEC. In my next video, I will be working more on the student side. Helping the student to know the possible question they are going to give out and the possible answer you are going to give them. Then the third video is going to be working on uh, the question 3, the target of question 3. Because question 3 is unknown. It is difficult for us to predict but we are going to give some clues on what you are going to do in order to attack the question number three thank you very much for watching this video and don't forget to share this video and don't forget to recommend this video recommend me to anywhere you think you can and also i wish you good luck in your preparation for your exam